Let me pause here for a minute and announce again to our world. Truly, a day is going to come upon the earth where those who are not in Christ will be doomed for eternal damnation. We can argue this. We can create a lot of philosophies. There are many intelligent dissertations, debates that have spanned through centuries debunking this reality. But let God be true and every man a liar. It is going to happen one day upon the earth that all those who had a chance to hear the gospel, it is the reason why we continue to frontier the cause of the kingdom, helping people understand that Jesus has come as savior, as an expression of the love of God to them. The only solution to man's state that he's not even aware of. It says, for all have seen. How many? All. Aware or otherwise, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus has come as a mediator. He didn't just come to inform us. He actually died. The Bible says so. He died. This is the gospel. I just felt burdened to just press it so that we don't just brush through the idea of a natural man. Something is wrong with such a man, spiritually speaking. Something may not be wrong with such a man, financially speaking. Something may not be wrong with such a man, intellectually speaking. When you look at the natural man, just from the eyes of a natural man too, you can see an excellent man. Maybe an excellent father, maybe a well-intentioned mother, maybe a, a, an intellectually vast individual. But we are looking from the lens of the spirit that anyone who is not in Christ is not saved. He's not saved because there is damnation that awaits all men. The only remedy is Jesus Christ. This is not a religious idea. This is truth. One day, all men will be forced to acknowledge the fact that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords indeed. It is the reason why we spend ourselves, our lives, and we are spent to help the nations to see that there is a way out. This is not a ministry assignment. This is not a religious fanatic assignment. It is a matter of urgency. I told you the greatest need of an unbeliever is not accommodation. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not education. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not even solving their hunger problem at the moment. All those are profitable, but the greatest need of an unbeliever is introducing him to Jesus and praying that he or she out of their will, will accept this substitutionary sacrifice. He who has the Son has eternal life. He who has the Son has eternal life. Only he who has the Son has eternal life. I have the Son so I have eternal life. You see that? So there is such a man called the natural man. He can be the natural man as a distinguished professor. The natural man as an intellectual. The natural man as a successful career person. The natural man as a mentor to heads of state and heads of government. A natural man as a millionaire and a billionaire. A natural man as an inventor that is true but from a spiritual standpoint any man that is not without that is without the Christ unregenerate is called the natural man it is not an insult is the description of a spiritual state that is in need of urgent attention now, for those of you who have been involved in any kind of charity or humanitarian work, when you go to places that are really impoverished, the health standards really low below average. Did you know that sometimes you can see the little children running around, no shoes, no, no shirts, playing football around, 
and you see all kinds of sicknesses, maybe sores, maybe, you know, eczema or something on the children. They are not even aware they are sick. Are we together? Because that level of life does not even afford them the privilege of awareness. It is when the doctors or the medical people, the missionaries come in. As soon as you look at the children, some of those children have, they are, they are sick to a point they are almost dying. They are not even aware. That is how the natural man is. The natural man is not even aware of his spiritual state. Are we together? Yes. So when you who is in Christ and have been given this mandate of world evangelization, when you meet such a man, you look at that man from the lens of this description that I just gave you, like a compassionate humanitarian person looking at a small child, malnourished, the child does not know what is the cause of this lack of energy draining even unto death. Sometimes they administer, you know, medical treatment to the child immediately. Because the child is not even aware that he's just hours left. Listen, if you begin to look at the world of unbelievers that way, my life changed when I found a new name for unbelievers. I don't call them sinners. I don't call them unbelievers. Something happens to you when you call sinners, sinners. It puts you in a state of self-righteousness and you cannot win them. Jesus calls sinners harvest. The moment you change that name, it changes your orientation. Because in the mind of God, every unbelieving person is ripe for harvest. So he calls them the harvest. I did a teaching on that. You can get, um, you can go to Koinonia Global. It was one of the teachings that we had in UK. The harvest is very important. So when you see a smoker, provided you are seeing a smoker or a prostitute or some, some um, um, uh, what they call it, some occultic person, what will come out from you to them is resentment, not compassion. But the moment you see them as a harvest, then you see them from the lens of Jesus, like a sheep without shepherd. Everyone say the natural man. In the midst of the thousands of people gathered here in this auditorium and all across, and the many who are following, I can tell you by the integrity of scripture, there are natural men hearing me now. There are natural men listening to me now. Well-intentioned people, they came to church, were gladly invited, Knowing that there is something missing in my life. You are right. It's a natural man. But the good news is that the possibility of transition still exists. That a natural man can leave that state. And I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. That you will not return back home as a natural man. Yeah. That if there is anybody here who is not saved. When it is time for the altar call. Don't let the devil deceive you. Distract you. And make you feel I think I'm ashamed. I think I'm afraid. The natural man has the eternal destiny of damnation. It's true. I saw the great and small stand before the Lord. The Bible says, books were opened and another book was opened. And whoso's name was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that burned with brimstone and sulfur. The Bible called it the second death. I want you to know that this whole thing about the eternal destiny of believers is not a church concept. It's not a Pentecostal concept. It's not a charismatic concept. It's not an evangelistic concept. In fact, it is not even a Christian concept. It is a matter of your destiny before now. That your destiny, watch this now. You came from somewhere. I hope you know you did not just appear. Yes. And the one who was there before time begun is the one who is making a way for you now to sort your eternal destiny. The destiny of everyone without Christ when our time here on earth is up is eternal damnation. When he, the spirit of truth, comes to the natural man, he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment. Are we together? He will let you know that you don't need to be this way again. That Jesus Christ has come as an expression of the love 
of the Father. Thank you for listening to this message. Are you blessed at all by this message? If yes, then smash that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember that when this life is over, everyone will give an account to God. Jesus Christ died for me and you so that we can receive the forgiveness of our sins, so as to stand holy and faultless before God. See you in our next video. We love you very much.